Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I think I just woke some up. I hope so. Because we're not here to sleep, we're here to worship the Lord. Amen? Yeah. He's worthy of our worship, He's worthy of our praise. And so let's stand this morning as we come before Him, as we come into His presence. The Bible says that He inhabits the praises of His people. And so we welcome you here today, welcome all visitors, all guests, and uh, we have a special guest today too, Pastor Mark Jayakumar from India, and also his daughter Janet are here, and we're thrilled about that. And he's there, give him a hand, amen, welcome them here. And Pastor Joel's going to be preaching the word this morning, and he's got a neat plan, he's got a neat word for today, so be ready to hear that. And we also welcome those that are watching by live stream, too. But we're here today to worship the Lord and to just lift him on high. And I pray that everyone will uh, receive something today that you will take with you. Amen? That God will do something in your heart today. We also have another special guest here today. And he's all the way from Germany. I don't know if you know Michael Hendricks here. Good to see him here. And uh, to have you here, Michael, we're very blessed. I heard you warming up there, and I said, I know that voice. I know that anointing. <laughs> so we're thrilled to have you here. Let's just lift our hearts to the Lord as we open up in prayer and in worship today. Heavenly Father, we come to you today to worship you, to lift you on high, to exalt your name, and to invite your presence here. Lord, we know that you are always with us. But Lord, we ask today that you would just shower us with your presence, O oh God, that we would sense your presence, we would know your presence, Lord, in a wonderful way. Holy Spirit, help us as we worship Jesus, as we worship the Father, that, Lord, our worship would rise up as incense to the very throne room of God now. And so, Lord, we just give you thanks for that as we enter in, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's worship together.
wants to make that apply to what we're declaring, what we're singing today. Fear is one of the most common tricks of the enemy. And so we're singing it, we're declaring it. But if you feel or if you suffer from fear, you need to let it be removed today in Jesus' name. And so if that's you, just pray this with me out loud. Just say, Lord Jesus, Come on, Lord Jesus. Jesus. I thank you that you've not given me a spirit of fear. And so I speak to fear and a spirit of fear. And I renounce you. I break your hold over me. And I order you to go from me into the pit of hell. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now just receive, hold on, just receive the Father's love. He wants to fill that place in you. He wants to fill the place because the more you have of the Father's love, the more secure you are. Then there's no room for fear. So just receive your Heavenly Father's love. Just receive and let Him fill you today. Don't let anything take away from that. It will give you the sound foundation. It will give you security. It will give you confidence that his love will fill and displace any other fear now. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we just sing that one more time?
I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am, I am a child of God, full of faith, yes I am, a child of God. Father, 
Shout that out loud together. He's a good, good father. Ready? You're a good, good father. Let's do that again. Ready? You're a good, good father. One more time. You're a good, good father. Woo! Glory. I don't know. Something just broke in the heavens there. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for just letting us be alive in you. And God, all that you do in our lives, Lord, through good times, through difficult times, but Lord, you're always there. You're always doing something good with our lives. And so, Lord, we declare that today, that you are a good, good Father. And we love you, Father. We love you, Father God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, just let that flow over your people right now, Lord. Everyone, Lord, your love, let it flow over the, from the back of the sanctuary to the front and to the back again, Lord. Let your love just flow right now. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we just continue to worship you together now. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, and everybody said with me, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Would you just give two or three people a hug this morning or a bless them, welcome them here today in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. We, uh, this week, this week uh, in our Hopewell Network, 
uh, we have been having a network uh, conference. We do that every year in October. And uh, it was an awesome week again uh, this week. And when we have this week, um, our international uh, leaders and apostles come in from the different nations that we are connected with. And uh, that includes uh, India, where Pastor Mark is from. It includes uh, Mexico. It includes Kenya. Uh, it includes uh, Thailand. And it includes Haiti. And Pastor Leslie Bertrand and his wife uh, Bernadette are here. They are at Rock Hill uh, Mennonite today. And they're preaching up there, but they'll be back for the fellowship meal. By the way, there's a fellowship meal today. All of you are invited after the service. But um, we, we have, and many of you may not know this, we have an orphanage that we support from our church here uh, in Haiti, north of Port-au-Prince. And we have about 16 children there. And every month, we look to send about uh, $1,200 for their food, you know, clothing, for the operation of it. Some months we run short. This month we've run short. And so I just want to make that known that if you would like to give or uh, designate some giving toward that, that would be great. But we have a video which will show Pastor Leslie, and uh, it will show you some pictures from the children. He has 22 churches in Haiti that he oversees and many of them they're up in the mountains and when he goes to visit them uh, he might have to walk a whole day from morning to evening to get to them uh, under very very difficult circumstances so uh, each of our apostolic leaders are brave men and women I gotta tell you and they do things that are absolutely amazing including Pastor Mark and, and Janet and their family, the testimonies are absolutely incredible. But let's take a look at this for a moment. just want to show this in regard to Haiti. And this is Pastor Leslie Bertrand. the progress of the gospel of Jesus Christ in Haiti, I see now we are developing some emergence leaders in our network in Haiti. There is a lot of young leaders who are interested in church planting and praise and worship and preaching ministry. I think it is a good future for our network in Haiti. Because when we see young people interested in the ministry, we can see there is a visibility and continuity for any ministry. The Good news is last August we had a worship service at the new building at Bellington. And on August 13, we have had a big celebration service where all the churches in our network come to celebrate God with us. But we are going to use that building not only for Sunday morning service, but it should be a equipping center to equip the people and send them out to spread 
the gospel of Jesus Christ in Haiti. Pray for me and pray for the other pastor in Haiti. To God be the glory. Thank you to all of you at the Topwell Network of Churches. Give the Lord a hand what he's doing in Haiti. And you're going to hear some from also Pastor Mark today, too. Uh-oh. To commandeer for the mic uh, a minute this morning. This is one of our elders here, so that's why I can do that. <laughs> I have a little bit of liberty, I guess. Uh, but today is Pastor Appreciation Sunday. Um, so we don't want the, them to do this for themselves. Yeah, you can definitely... Definitely show us some support. Can you come down front? Can you come down front with us here? Could I ask Pastor Nita, would you come up? Joel? Sorry to the sound team. Uh, Drew and Stephanie, can you guys come join us this morning? Drew is the youth pastor. Harold? Harold and Joanne? Oh, no, Harold's sick this morning. Okay. And um, Pastor Mark, would you be honored to come up with us and join us? Pastor Mark is, uh, I think you already announced him, but a pastor from India, and he has really been um, just a tremendous friend of the network and really has some tremendous relationships um, here. So we definitely want to honor him this morning as well. And also uh, Joel Hackman, but um, Joel and Shirley, they're traveling today, so they're not going to be available. Uh, could I have the elders as well come up? Jack, would you be able to come up? I know some of them are serving in the classes. We won't be able to have them all um, up front here, but we just want to pray a blessing over you. And um, Ed and Carol and um, Lamar and Bonnie, if they're available, would you be able to come up? Um, Lamar and Bonnie and Ed and Carol served for many, many years and have walked with um, the pastors in a great, great capacity for a long time. Just thought it'd be great if they could come up and join us as well. We want to pray a blessing over you, and I don't want to say a whole lot, but I just had a, a couple of things. Um, just want, as I was kind of thinking about this, um, just wanted to kind of think of some words that characterized, you know, a pastor. And the things that came to mind was obviously a love for the Lord, which I know every single one um, of the pastors here just is a tremendous example of their own personal journey in that way. Um, but dedication and a heart for people are the other two things that came to mind. Now, as I was kind of thinking about that, I feel like words like dedication and a heart for people they almost become trivial the way people kind of just, you know, um, just speak them out or kind of use them in, in just kind of almost a casual way. Um, but I just wanted to highlight that if most of us knew even some of the minimal details of the journey that every single one of these people walk to live that out, the level of dedication and the level of sacrifice and giving, you know, none of us would ever view that as a trite phrase or something to be taken lightly. And I can personally speak that every single one of these people really lives out in a very charactered way. And uh, so we just want to say thank you, um, a deep appreciation for all that you do and contribute. And uh, we just want to play a uh, blessing over you this morning. Father God, we thank you for the calling that is placed um, on every single one of these people up front here. And we thank you for the fruit that has come out of it. And we thank you for the journey. Um, that they have in each of it. In Jesus' name, we bless them to continue to thrive and to be well. And as a congregation, we also stand around them and call forth a spirit of protection and favor over them. Yes. Lord, that as they have so many times stood um, in front of us on our behalf, um, that we might have protection, Lord, we in turn want to do the same thing. So we pray a spirit of protection mm -hmm. over you, a spirit of good favor and of good fruit in your lives. And in Jesus' name, we just thank you in a deep, deep way for the people that you've called um, here in this way. In Jesus' name, amen. As we stand before you today, we all honor you as fathers and mothers in the faith, as leaders. But I feel the Lord is saying, just as when Jesus was baptized by John and he rose up out of the water and the Lord said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And the Lord is saying, you are my beloved sons and daughters in whom I am well pleased. And our children's Bible, which I'm more familiar with, says that when he rose up out of the water, the light shone on him and from within him. 
and we see today that the light shines on you and from within you. So I thank you, Father, that we can honor these mighty men and women as our leaders, as fathers and mothers in the faith, but as your beloved children, your sons and daughters. And we thank you that just as you say, I am well pleased, we thank you for the honor and we say thank you to them. We stand with Eric and pray that hedge of protection around them, around their families, their children, their children's children. We thank you so much for your light that shines upon them and from within them, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that these ones standing before us and before you today don't just serve us, but they are servants of the Most High God. And it's the love that they have for the Father, for Jesus, for, for Holy Spirit. It's that love that flows from their hearts that in turn loves us. And Lord, bless them, keep them, cause your face to shine upon them. Give them many years of fruitful and good life. Bless them and keep them and their families, their extended families. Bless them, Lord, as they serve you. And through that serving of you, they serve us as well. Bless them and keep them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that we can uh, enter into the work and that as we acknowledge our leaders up front here, we realize that you have placed them there and we choose to affirm them. We choose to, as a congregation, to lift them up and to bless them today, to recognize all the sacrifices that they give. Uh, unknowingly, they do it out of a heart because they're doing it unto you, but yet it takes a lot of strength. They come under a lot more tax, it seems, than um, congregation does, but they, they carry the heart of the congregation to you. And Lord, we're asking that we would be uh, quickened as a congregation to bless them as you speak to us, uh, words of encouragement, notes along the way, and as we see this day today and this month as an opportunity to bless them and to touch their hearts, we pray in Jesus' name that they would be strengthened in their love man inside of them, and that they would be lifted to that level of the calling which you have called them to fulfill uh, in you and for this congregation. We thank you for the love that they have we thank you that they have a love that's ready to lay it all down. They're ready to lay their lives down for you and for the people here. So, Lord, uh, we bear witness to that today. And we just ask that you would bless them, protect them, put your blood covering over them, your hedge of protection around them and their families, whatever struggles, whatever they work through within their homes. We pray in Jesus' name that you would cause them to rise up and that these challenges would be overcome in you. So we bless them today and we acknowledge them as gifts to this congregation. And we choose in various ways to bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, there's a, a little gift for each of you uh, behind you, for each of the pastors. Um, got mums. It's uh, fall is a time of harvest and of beauty, so... <laughs> That's something that was gotten for each of you. You can kind of pick one as you kind of come off here so that we, you can each kind of choose. choose or, or at the end. Yeah, that's maybe a good way to do it. I just wanted to, do, um, to highlight, too, afterwards, um, there is going to be a fellowship meal later on, which is already announced. But in addition, there's going to be a cake in the cafe for those who are not able to stick around for the full meal but would like to get a chance just to um, just express appreciation for the pastors. There's going to be a basket back there you know, for tokens of appreciation and for cards. And then um, I think my understanding is that Pastor Joel's not going to be able to stick around real long. So maybe you can balance out showing him appreciation yeah. and honoring his uh, commitments of time. <laughs> We've got to make an airport rod, okay? But yeah, one more round of applause and appreciation for all the pastors up here this morning. Thank you.
Uh, you may have your mic back. Wow, that's all I can say. To God be the glory for great things he's done and for a wonderful congregation that we serve here. And we appreciate every single one of you so much. Thank you, thank you. All right, um, just real quickly because we need to go ahead and move on this morning. Um, Operation Christmas Child boxes, pick them up back there and you'll see information about what needs to go in them. Men's Retreat, October 27, 28, 29. Pastor Joel's leading that. Bill um, Beck from Spring City. I just saw his agenda of what he's going to be preaching. It's awesome. Men need to be there. Wives, make sure they get there. And Transforming Hearts is coming up this coming weekend. Uh, get the information on it. It's a good time for being healed in your heart and your spirit. Let's receive the offering this morning as we give. Let's give unto the Lord. The ushers come forward. Throughout the years, it's always been the way that I've looked at it is when I give, I give unto the Lord, however he uses it, however his servants will use it. And here we have many checks and balances, so it gets used very well. Father, we humbly come before you today. And Lord, you are the God of all provision, Lord. You provided for uh, every uh, need that there is, that is here, that we are here today, Lord. God, you provided for Abraham, Lord. Abraham, even the ram, Lord, for the sacrifice you provided. And Lord, I pray now, each one of us, as we give today, that you would receive it and you would pour out your blessing upon it now. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We're going to have an offertory this morning by our guest here, who's not a guest, by Michael Hendricks. Uh, and I'm just going to let him share a little bit and uh, lead us in a song. Yeah. Pass the code. So I'm Michael Hendricks, <clears throat> 29. I live in Bielefeld, Germany. Now I'm a kindergarten teacher and worship leader there, but uh, grew up in this church pretty much. <laughs> Then spent a lot of years as worshiper and worship leader and working with uh, the youth. So I was back and forth between Germany quite a bit. And about two and a half years ago, then God gave me, uh, led me more to, to move. So I moved to Germany. And it's been a while getting to where he's, he's brought me. But right now I'm at a church and it's really been exciting because there, there's a pastor there who's really going after revival and, and uh, they've done a lot of pray and fa praying and fasting for that. And uh, they even told me they were praying for a worship leader, someone <laughs> young with a good voice <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> so I've been worship leading there for uh, about almost six months, I think. So it's been, that's been really, really awesome to see what God's doing. There's a good group of young adults there. And so it's so viel einfacher auf Deutsch zu erklären, aber it's really, Hard to switch back to the language, but um, yeah, I thought we'd do a song today. It's one of the songs that we played just last week, actually, and uh, we have the translation in English. It's, I think, an English song, but I'll play it in German, so yeah. Stehen wir auf. 
ist alle Welt, er kommt bald zurück, jedes Knie wird sich vor ihm beugen, der gerechte König wird bei uns sein, seine Herrschaft ist unsere Freiheit, er regiert, herrsche alle See you again, Michael. Wow. <laughs> we got enough echo in here. We don't need the effect yet, too. Well, it's good to um, be in the house of the Lord this morning. It's kind of an international Sunday, I guess you could say. Got the German worship. We... Pastor Mark with us here this morning. I'm going to give him a little bit of my time, um, actually, hopefully a little more of my time, but um, I have to also explain to you that he has a flight to catch this afternoon, uh, and it's all the way up in JFK, so we don't want to be running late, so we're going to kind of like slip out of here early, so um, basically when, I'm, when we're done preaching, I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor Kurt, and we're bugging out of here. So, if you uh, are hoping to greet us after the service, it's not going to happen. But I thank you for your appreciation. Um, you know, actually, I think one of the hardest things that we do here as pastors is trying to balance the spontaneity and the freedom of the moving of the Holy Spirit with helping people feel safe and feel like things are actually somewhat under control. <laughs> And, uh, you know, finding that balance, being able to, you know, allow for the freedom of the moving of the Spirit, but still shepherd it and, and help every, everybody feel like there's, there is a plan, you know. We just have to 
let it go sometimes, um, that's probably one of the hardest things that we do. We're in a series this morning um, on Romans called The Power to Live by Faith. There it is, right up there, just to remind you <clears throat> what it is we're studying. We're going to be in, um, over the next two weeks, I have the assignment of covering Romans chapters 9 through 11, which specifically refer to faith and God's revelation to and through Israel. I I joked with you, I I think Pastor Kurt gave me this assignment because he sent me to Israel back in February, and he wants to see how much I've learned. (laughs) Now, as I looked at the passage, chapters 9 and 11 sort of go together, and they talk about Israel's response to the gospel of Jesus Christ, but this morning, I'm going to be covering chapter 10, which sits as kind of a, the meat of the sandwich, should you say. And chapter 10 talks about the universality of the gospel. That is to say that God has extended this message of salvation to all, to everyone. There you go. We have an international Sunday this morning, so you can already see where I'm going with this. Let's take a look at um, Romans 10, uh, beginning verses 1 to 4. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved, speaking of his fellow Jews. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Now, some people use this message, this very passage in Romans, they'll use it to say that Israel is no longer important. That because according to this view, faith in Jesus, the New Testament, and the institution of the church have replaced the law, the Old Testament, and the Jewish people. Now, we don't believe that here. I believe that Paul is making the argument that God's revelation through Jesus transcends previous revelation, but it also includes and consequently changes how we see what has been revealed up until that time. See, the church has not replaced Israel, but the church is intended to further accomplish the purpose of God. We're not replacing, we're just simply taking what God has given to Israel and taking it further. You know, in many ways, the church has fallen into the same patterns that Israel has. You know, we could be hard on Israel and say, well, they didn't get it. They missed it. Well, what makes you so special? (laughs) Haven't we also kept for ourselves what God intended to be spread to the world? Every time we brush off that impulse to talk to our neighbor... Every time we say, oh no, God, please don't send me. Every time we prefer to sit in our comfortable worship circles instead of getting out into the world where things are a little more messy, we're doing exactly what Israel did. You know, it's always been God's intention to save the world. This whole thing about the Gentiles being added, that wasn't something that they suddenly came up with after Jesus was raised from the dead. That has been God's intention all along. What did he say to Abraham? Pastor Kurt covered this just a couple of weeks ago. He said to Abraham, I will bless you and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through you. I'm going to bless you, but I'm going to bless the nations of the earth through you. Hebrew goyim, Gentiles, those people that 
you avoid, I'm going to bless them through you. Came up in Sunday school this morning about Melchizedek, talking about the fact that Melchizedek was not from the line of Aaron, so therefore Jesus could be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek because he wasn't a Levite either. Well, in fact, Melchizedek wasn't just not a Levite. He was not an Israelite. Imagine that, Abraham receiving revelation from a pagan priest. That blows our minds. As Pastor Mark chooses to share, he can tell you, God is revealing himself among the pagans. And many of them are getting revelations of God. One of my favorite authors, a, a man by the name of Leslie Newbigin, enlightened me as to God's role for Israel. Leslie uh, Newbigin uh, was a missionary to India for some 50 years from England, and when he came back to England, he found that the state of the church was worse than when he left. And so he began to write a lot of books and, and began to try to help the church get back on track. The thing that Leslie Newbigin shed light on for me is he said that in God revealing himself to all mankind, and I'm sure he was enlightened by his time in India because India is a diverse culture. Uh, you have 13 major languages, lots of different people groups. And Newbigin says this, he says, God in revealing himself to mankind, he must necessarily choose a language and a culture through which to communicate. If I'm going to go to India and I'm going to be a missionary there, there is no way I can be a missionary to all of India because it's too diverse. I need to choose a language and a culture in which to begin. And then from that place, the gospel can spread. God had to do that in coming to earth as well. He had to choose a language and a culture through which to make inroads into the earth. He chose Israel as his vehicle of communication. Let's move on with the scripture. Hebrews 10, verse five. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, and the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. What does it say? It says, the word is near you. It is in your mouth, and it's in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Thank you, a little help from my microphone here. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the, the Lord is the Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The law is important because it shows us how we can have a relationship with God. That's why it was necessary that God gave the law to Moses. He was teaching a bunch of former slaves how to live as a community and how to worship God. And in order to do that, he gave them the law. He gave them uh, an understanding of what God's righteous requirements are with regard to them. Without that, we would not have known God. You know, pagan relationships are... Um, Pagan religions are also seeking God, and they usually have some level of re revelation. If they didn't, nobody would buy it. Nobody would believe it. But in most pagan relation, uh, religions, God is, God is out there somewhere, and they are constantly trying to bring God down to their level. 
in order to understand him. Then there's other religions that focus on the afterlife. They seem to understand that how one lives in this life has implications for the next life, but there's no understanding of what God desires or requires, certainly no understanding of what it means to walk in relationship with God. You know, the law is important because the law teaches us about holiness, that God is holy. It teaches us about sin, that we are not holy in our present state. And it also teaches us about the need for a sacrifice, that something has to die in order to pay for sin. But the thing about the law is that Israel was never able to fully keep the law. Even though God spelled it out for them, this is who I am and this is what's required to walk in relationship for, with me, nobody could actually do it, or at least not completely. So then God's ultimate revelation was in Jesus Christ. Here's the beauty of it. God himself came to earth to do what we could not do and to fulfill the requirement of the law. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Pastor Mark to take the next passage, um, verses 14 through 18. Pastor Mark, would you come? Do we have a microphone for Pastor Mark? Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Pastor Joel, for uh, giving me this opportunity to <clears throat> just uh, speak a few things in continuation of uh, the scripture portion here. Uh, if you can turn your uh, Bibles to uh, <clears throat> Romans chapter 10, verses 14. To 17, uh, it talks about how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed, and how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard, and how are they to hear without someone preaching, and how are they to preach unless they are sent, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed? what the Lord has heard from us. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. As Pastor Joel was telling, God is revealing himself to the pagan world. Okay, uh, India is having about 82% of Hindus, and there are many unreached groups, many unreached people who have never heard the gospel. And God has placed our network uh, in India to preach the gospel. How they can believe if they have not heard, and how can they hear if somebody is not preaching the word? And I believe that God wants each and every one here even he wants to use everyone here to preach his word. Wherever you are, wherever God has placed you. <clears throat> you may be wondering, like, will really people believe? Let me tell you a story here. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. Now, don't be, you know, upset or don't give up on just preaching the word. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I would like to give you my uh, personal experience in that. Me and Francina, my wife, in 1989, we were living in a small house. And just behind that house, there was a wall 
and a family was uh, living in that house, husband and wife and four of his daughters, four of their daughters, and they were coming from a high caste. But uh, though they kind of uh, were interested, especially the daughters and the mother, they were interested about the gospel, but yet they had no way of coming to our prayer group or church because, you know, we had a small church because they are coming from a high caste. And also the father, the husband was very, you know, he was hindering them to come to hear the gospel. So two years later, this family left that village, left that place. 15 years later, 2007, um, you know, I went to a wedding reception that was way far from our village. Me and Francina, my wife, we went to uh, <clears throat> that wedding reception. We were sitting among the congregation and the wedded couple were on the stage and the pastor who was solemnizing the wedding called me into the dais and he told me, Pastor Mark, would you like to pray for this couple? So I prayed and I went and sat back in my chair. But then I saw a woman was just pinching on my shirt and she was telling, Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark. I didn't see her. Then again, she was just calling me Pastor Mark. Then I turned back and I saw a lady and four, uh, again, four ladies. <clears throat> but then they asked like, do you know us? I told, I don't know you. <laughs> because it was 15 years later. I don't know you. I cannot make who you are. But then one of the ladies told, this is our mother. And this is my sisters. And do you remember we were in such and such village and you and Francine used to live in that room? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, then I recall. Yes, yes, I, I remember. But how come you, you, you have Bibles? How come you have Bibles in your hand? Because there is no way that you can have Bible because you came from high caste and uh, you were Hindus. No way. But they told, we are holding Bible today. It's because of you both. I told we didn't preach to you. You didn't come to Sunday worship service. You didn't attend any of our prayer group. They told, well, we didn't. But you know, you are the cause. I told how it happened. I asked them how it happened. They told like this. Well, every morning you and Francine, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., you both used to sing songs and you used to preach loudly the word of God and all we did was, we were afraid of our father, but we gave our ear to the wall and we were listening for one hour what you preached and sang. <laughs> That's how we got saved. Come on. Faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. Come on. What are you hearing? <laughs> so not only that the story doesn't end, this is what she told. Through us, about 200 people got saved, and we have a church. <laughs> Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing from the word of God. No wonder Jesus said in Mark chapter 4, 24, and he said unto them, take heed what you hear. Now, did God give you promise and something opposite happened to you? In James chapter 1, verse 19, it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. So you have to hear carefully. And in 2 Corinthians 4, 13, it says, We having same spirit of faith, we all have the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Now, what you hear, you get faith out of it, and then you speak. I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. Come on. Now, God wants to use every one of you here to hear the word of God that is preached here by God's servants, 
and he wants you to take this word and then he wants you to deliver it to the people and then he wants to see the pagan or unbelievers to be saved. Within given time, Pastor Joel has shared his time and I'm going to tell you three stories that will ignite your faith. I always love to tell my life stories that will really ignite your faith. Well, uh, by the way, Pastor Kurt and Anita and Pastor Joel, I want to tell you as you are worshiping here, the Lord told me to declare this word over this congregation. And you know what is that word? Don't settle, keep climbing. <laughs> Don't settle in whatever the difficult situations or grief or sadness. Don't settle there, keep climbing. That's for this congregation. Now, what are you hearing? Are you hearing the word of God? Or are you hearing what people say? One story, number one story. You know, you remember about two years ago, my whole family, we, 10 of us, we came here. But uh, in order to get our visas, it was very difficult. And uh, some people uh, told us that uh, as a whole family, to get visa for 10 of you, it's very difficult. That's what they told. Because you are a pastor, and if the US embassy officers know that you are flying to US, uh, you know, they will not give. And guess what? All these people who told us, their visas were somehow disapproved. <laughs> so now, but God said to me, you are going to find divine favor. And God uh, kept speaking to us through his word. He's going to give us special favor. And so we all go, 10 of us, we all go to this uh, embassy office. And uh, this uh, woman is an American woman, uh, embassy officer. And I believe we were standing in line, 10 of us, come on. And I was hearing in my mind, you will not get visa because you are a pastor. But God was speaking to me in the heart, you will find divine favor. But this woman, she was looking, she was, you know, kind of very fat, and her face looked like tomato, and uh, she was kind of, you know, maybe something happened in the, in the, in the house. But I, I you know, uh, saw that there was one lady, Indian lady, who was applying for visa, and her visa was canceled, disapproved. But then again, something spoke in my head, you will not get visa. But God was telling, you will get visa, because you have a divine favor. So I had to make a choice to hear the word of God or hear the man's word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Come on, you hear the word of God and God will use you as instruments. Now, our turn came. And so this woman officer, she asked, why are you going to US? The whole family, 10 of you. And, uh, you know, my mind, my mind was saying, no, you will never get. But the Lord was telling, you will find divine favor. So I got to believe. And as I came to speak, that uh, officer told, sir, please don't speak. Let your daughter speak. Oh. <laughs> okay. So the Lord told me, just believe. Just believe what you heard from me. Okay. I let my daughter spoke. Within two minutes, the officer approved our visas, and we got 10-year multiple entry visa. All of us, come on. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Number two, the second story. Okay, I don't know where you are in your life's journey. I know everybody, we all are somewhere in our life journey. But my encouragement is, I want you to go home, start hearing the word of God, Start hearing the word of God, nothing else. Start hearing the word of God because God will not speak to your head. He will speak to your heart. Okay. Me and my wife, Francina. Francina is with the Lord now. But uh, as uh, we got married in 1988, ever since then, we started praying for our children. Once in a month, we fast and pray. And we get the word from God. And we started declaring over our family over all our children and the orphan children and everybody. But it so happened in our life's journey, our older daughter, Jennifer, went off course after our high school. And we thought we lost her. 
because she whirled into the, she went into the worldliness and uh, it was very difficult. But uh, the Lord gave us a word about her and we started declaring over her. Every time, once in a month, we fasted and prayed, me and Francine, we used to speak that word over her, over her. But five years over, nothing happened. Everybody told, like, you know, people started mocking us, talking about Jennifer and all that. But me and Francine, we did hold on to the word that God gave us. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Come on, let that word sink into you today. Okay. After sixth year, we started praying, God, if there is any good thing that you can take out of Jennifer, you start taking it back. <laughs> so... God took her friends, God took her health, God took her, um, you know, everything that he could, he was, God was taking back, and we were watching that. A time came. God did not forget the word he gave to us. He did not forget the faith that we had. God did not forget the declarations that we made. Let me tell you, let me tell you what happened. After sixth year, God touched her, God brought her back, now, our old, older daughter, Jennifer, is going to help 25 girls who are coming out of temple prostitution. We are building that project. Rose of Sharon is a project that is going to help the women prostitutes, the girls prostitutes who are offered as prostitutes in this temple. About 3,000 girls are offered as a prostitute to this temple, and Jennifer, is helping us to take care of these girls. Come on. What are you hearing about your children? What are you he hearing about your daughters and sons? I don't know where you are in your journey. What is your dead situation today? The Lord is telling, don't settle where people have told you something about your family, but climb because you have the word in you. And the last story, Pastor Joel, last story. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing because I, I, I just know that God is in, igniting faith in all of you, okay? Number four, I mean, number three uh, story. Now, this is the village the Lord called me. And uh, the neighboring village, the Lord told me to go and preach. But this village was surrounded by temples, nearly about four big temples. And the Lord told me, go and preach there. But all the people told me, no, 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 please don't go and preach there because it's a Hindu temple. You cannot preach there. But the Lord told me, preach. Will you obey God or will you obey people? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Come on. So we had to obey. So me and Francine and some of our church members, we go there and I have this harmonica. And I am playing, and Francine is playing the tambourine, and uh, some of our church believers are playing tabla, and we are standing there and preaching the gospel. While we were preaching the gospel, we had uh, about uh, five or six young boys coming in front of us. The, the people are hearing what we are preaching, and then uh, the five or six young men come, and they told, next week you are not coming here. If you come here, we are going to break your legs. They just went. They told, stop your preaching, stop singing, and you, man, they, they showed me, because I was speaking Kannada, my language, they told, you are not going to come. Okay, so we just left the village. We started praying for the whole week. And it was on Thursday, we were supposed to go on Wednesday, Holy Spirit told us, you are going. I told, they are going to break my leg. <laughs> Holy Spirit, they are going to break my leg. But the Holy Spirit told me, don't teach me anything. I am going to teach you. <laughs> Come on. So the Lord just told me, you go and speak boldly. I didn't know why, what for. So we go there. And we are standing there. And I am preaching the gospel. There you go. The four men are coming. The young men are coming. And I am preaching, but inside I am telling God, they are going to break my leg. What's going to happen? The Lord told, I want you to just speak the word. Don't just teach me. Come on. But as I was speaking, the Lord told me, pray this prayer. As, uh, you know, the angels went the, to Sodom and Gomorrah, and the angels blinded the eyes of the people, God told me, just pray this prayer silently. Blind the eyes of these four men. 
And I told, in Jesus' name, let your eyes be blinded. You know, I just, I just prayed that prayer in tongues. For sure, these four men come. They are going in front of me. And you know what they are telling? Hey, where is this man? Hey, where is this man? Maybe he's afraid. He's not come here. Oh, so let's go. So they just passed by us. <laughs> Praise God. But guess what happened? Guess what happened? After one year, there came a two young people who came to the Lord who were hearing us. And now they are the leaders of a big organization in India. <laughs> Praise God. I am going to close here. And I'm going to tell you this. Dear God's people, I'm going to conclude here. And I want to tell you this. Don't settle. Keep climbing. And God wants to use everyone who heard this message. That he wants to hear the word. And he wants you to go and declare. Thank you and God bless you. Over to Pastor Jim. Would you stay here for a moment? I'm going to skip the last part of my message. There's a few more verses in this chapter, but the Lord's laying something else on my heart because it ties into really what this passage is saying and what I've been saying up until now. As we were together as Hopewell Network leaders this week, we did something different that we've never done before. We had a retreat with the international leaders. And I was privileged to be a part of that. It, it really gave us more time to fellowship with one another and gave us more time to have time in prayer. Usually we have the Hope on Network intercessors come and, and pray for each of the international leaders, each of the international apostles. It was interesting what happened this year as we were together. Instead of the intercessors praying for the leaders, uh, they, we took it by region and we began to pray a, really a lot for one another. And uh, it was amazing because there was a lot of identificational repentance happening. You know, for example, you know, what the white man has done in India has not particularly been good. And uh, so there was repentance for that, uh, just a lot of prayer around that. But, but here's what I want you to understand, because what we say is, so many times this, this particular passage, Romans 9 through 11, is taken and used by the church to say, Israel missed it, but we got it. And here's what I want you to hear. We've missed it too. Yes. You want to know why? Because not only have we not been obedient to go and speak the word, but we have looked down on and condescended the very people that God has sent us to. I want to tell you, this is my brother in Christ, and I have learned more from him than I think he has learned from me. <laughs> he can disagree if he wants to, but I have learned more from him than he has learned from me. Do you see? Do you get it? how God wants to send us to the world. He wants us to speak the word, but not in a condescending way, because as my brother shared, God is also speaking a word to us, and it's oftentimes different from the word that we're hearing in our head. He wants us to hear. So as we're going through this passage in Romans, and I'll be speaking more about Israel next week, but I want, you, I want you to hear that word, and let's take it right into our own context. God, God is sending us to the world, but we should not make the same mistake that Israel made, or we probably already are making the same mistake that Israel made, and that we we know that we're sons and daughters of God, but that does not give us the right to condescend on anyone else. If I could have the worship team come to close and the prayer team come to pray. Um, would you stand? Let's just 
Pastor Mark, would you, would you pray a blessing, pray yes. a, a benediction over us? Yeah. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for your people here. Lord Jesus, yes, Lord, you used Israel to bring the gospel to us, Lord. We pray for Israelites. And Lord Jesus, this morning I pray for all your people here, Lord. Lord, Pastor Kurt and Anita and Pastor Joel and family, and for all the elders and for everyone who is seated here, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will impart boldness into every one of them. That they will not hear in their head, but they will hear the word and believe and take it, Lord. Into their community, into their relatives, into their family, Lord. I pray a prayer of blessing. And I pray, Lord, that they will not settle in their riches, in their comfort zone, but they will take risk, Lord. And they will go, Lord, from this day onwards, Lord, that they will take this word of faith and preach it. Everywhere, Lord, because our work in the Lord is not in vain. And Lord Jesus, if there's anybody who is, Lord, remaining in that complacency and, Lord, just ignorant or who are telling, no, this is not going to work, but I pray, I come against it in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, that each and everyone give that boldness of faith to take this word, Lord, the seed of your word into everywhere that you take them, Lord. Lord, bring that boldness courage, Lord. Let them not fear about anything, Lord. Impart unto them the spirit of faith. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. I'm gonna, the worship team can play a song in closing. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Kurt, and we have a plane to catch.